This video is an overview of FNGrave text to G-code converter. FNGrave uses CXF font files to convert plain text into G-code output. The text font properties that FNGrave allows you to adjust are the text height, line thickness, text width, character spacing, word spacing, and line spacing. One to note here is the line thickness. Inputting the correct line thickness allows FNGrave to display the line thickness corresponding to the final output that you will be generating. We, each of these entry boxes can be adjusted. As we adjust the line thickness, you can see that the entry box turns yellow, indicating that a recalculation is required. We can perform the recalculation by either hitting the Enter key while inside the entry box or moving down to the Recalculate button. When we hit the recalculate button, we can see that the display is updated and the lines are much thicker in the engraved font. The next set of options adjust the text position and orientation. The text angle adjusts the angle at which the text is generated. The justification affects how multiple lines of a text are aligned. You have left justification center justification, and right justification. The origin determines where the zero position for your g-code is going to be. The default is the baseline for the first line of text. If you're making text on a circle, the default will be the center of the circle. Adjusting to different positions using the drop-down menu will affect where the axes and the zero position is located in your final g-code output. The other two options here are the flip text and mirror text. The flip text mirrors the text vertically and the mirror text mirrors the text horizontally. The next set of options allows placing text on a circle. For placing text on a circle it is recommended that the input text is limited to one or two lines of text because more than that will result in distortion of the text. The first entry box in the text on circle properties defaults to zero, indicating that the text is not placed on a circle. If we change that circle radius to something other than zero, the text will then be placed on a circle. The circle of radius one is displayed in the display box as a dotted white line. The outside circle checkbox is checked, indicating that the text is on the outside of the circle. If we uncheck that box, the radius is now shown on the outside of the text and the text is on the inside of the circle. Similarly, top of the circle was checked, now we will uncheck it, and now the text is placed on the bottom of the circle. The text position and orientation options are still active, so we can now center the text on the circle, and that works both on the top of the circle and the bottom of the circle. Next, we have the G-code properties. We have the feed rate, the safe Z position for rapid motions, and the cut depth. The font files box shows all of the font files that are available in the font directory. The currently selected font is displayed just below that box. To select a different font, you can left click on the font file in the font files box. If you want to see all of the characters that are available for that font, you can click on the Show All Font Characters box. That will temporarily show the font characters that are available. Unselecting that box will revert back to the text that is in the input text box. On the menu bar under File, we have Open FNGrave G-Code File. When FNGrave saves a G-Code file, all of the settings and text used to create that file are saved in the comments section allowing FNGrave to reopen that file for editing at a later date. We also have Save G-Code File and Save SVG File or Scalable Vector Graphics File. Under the Edit menu option, we have Copy G-Code or SVG data to the clipboard. Under the View, we have Refresh, which is the same as Recalculate. And we have checkboxes for show thickness, show origin axis, and show bounding box. And these options just affect what is displayed in the display box on the main window. Under settings, we have general settings. 
in the general settings dialog we have the option for selecting inches or millimeters as units inputting an X and Y offset which just offsets the zero position in the G code adjusting the arc angle the arc angle affects how F engrave interprets arcs within the CXF font files some CXF font files use arcs to describe the shapes in the fonts within F engrave those arcs are converted into straight lines increasing the angle will decrease the number of segments used to describe those arcs the g-code header is just a set of g-code commands that are executed before engraving begins and the postscript are codes that are executed after engraving ends the font directory is just a path to the CXF fonts that are on your system. The height calculation determines how the height of the font is determined. Using the max all option, all of the characters in the current selected font are used to determine the scaling factor to establish the text height. Because all of the characters are used in determining the max height, some of the characters that are used in determining that height may not be used in the text that you're engraving. This may result in the actual height of the text you're engraving being slightly less than the text height that is input on the main screen. The default option here is the max used. This means that only the characters that are used in the text that you're engraving will be used to determine the max height. This ensures that the height of the characters you are engraving will equal the height input in the text height value on the main screen. The add box or circle option allows you to add a box or a circle depending on whether you're engraving plain text or text on a circle. The location and size of the circle is determined by a border gap and that's a function of the line thickness. The default is one times the line thickness and what that will result in is a white space between the outside of your text and the box or circle of one line thickness. The white space between the text and the circle can be increased by increasing the border gap. I'm going to select yes for add box circle so we can see what that looks like on the main screen and then again if we select the circle radius to zero it'll indicate that we're no longer in a circle and it'll go back to straight text and it'll add the box around the text. So that concludes our discussion on F-Engrave so good luck and enjoy using F-Engrave.